So here we're picking up exactly where the last video left off and you can see I'm taking this next row working from the right hand side of the quilt, the edge of the quilt, into the center and I'm just simply taking this row and trying to interlock it with the row before it so that way it's seamless and you can't really tell that it was worked in rows. Occasionally you're going to have some weird areas like you can see right here I'm stitching some fairly small lollipops in that area but if you keep branching out in all different directions and you generally keep your lollipops a rather large shape and rather open then this is going to fill very quickly. Now I'm working my way back into this middle area. I've worked my way essentially from the right hand side of the quilt all the way back into the center and I'm still continuing to interlock the lollipop shapes together as I move into the center of the quilt. Now I'm going to start taking the lollipops and branching downwards. I'm just moving straight from the center straight down towards me. And I'm not going to rotate the quilt. I'm not going to rotate it to work left to right. I'm just going to let it go from uh, basically top to bottom. And I really think that you should try this so that way you can see which way really flows best for you. If you work better working from left to right or right to left or working from the top to the bottom. So now I'm nearing the edge of the quilt and you can see I'm fitting in a few small pieces here and there. But occasionally I will stitch straight off of one of my lollipops and not end it with a circle. I'll not end it with a complete lollipop. I'll just butt it right up against the batting. So here you can see I'm kind of planning out how I'm going to rotate the quilt and now stitch right back into the center and down for the next quadrant. So here we've zoomed in again and you can see that this quilting working from the right to the left again just butting up another row is exactly what we were doing before. We're just simply working about a four inch row interlocking the two rows together so that they're nice and seamless and always working to keep our lollipops nice and big and open with lots of space between them. We're going for a bed or a baby quilt here so we don't want the quilt to be too stiff. So try and leave between a half an inch to an inch between all of the different lines of quilting and your quilt will stay very nice and soft. As you can see there's about an eight inch channel of lollipop chain running through the middle of the quilt uh, kind of creating almost a cross like look with four quadrants now open and ready to be filled. Now it did take about three hours to quilt this entire quilt and I would have to say that it would probably have filled a lot faster if I had made my lollipops a lot bigger. But if you notice it's actually a little harder to stitch bigger on a domestic sewing machine. It's a lot easier to stitch really tiny shapes because you're working with your hands and it can be very fine tuned and very minute control. So for me stitching even this big when I'm used to stitching very very tiny this was kind of a stretch for me. But you can always increase the size and increase the distance between your shapes and keep your quilts a lot more open and quilt it a lot more loosely and it will quilt and finish a lot faster. So here you can see I'm just fitting these lollipops in all together filling this up and finishing off this last quadrant. Every once in a while I'll run into a pin and I try and take those out uh, before they get too far into my way. But really it's just simply a matter of fitting it all together and using sometimes the edge of your quilt uh, along the batting area kind of as an area to travel along in order to get uh, into a new area in order to stitch more lollipops. Now I hope this has helped you understand how to cover your quilt in Oliver Quilting. So let's check out what it looks like when you finish and cover the whole quilt with lollipop chain. For the next video in this series, make sure to check out freemotionquilting.blogspot.com.